So one of the things to know about this assessment is that it took place during the context of COVID-19, which we're unfortunately not out of yet. Um, this assessment was really guided by service guidelines and by risk assessment, which meant that it wasn't really appropriate to engage in face-to-face -face assessment with this service user. Uh, this assessment was also the first remote neuropsychological assessment to take place within the service context um, and the service user contributed to the development of service user resources um, for remote assessment. Um, the presentation has been anonymised, um, but the service user has given their consent for, for this uh, presentation to take place. So various guidance has been produced to guide the use of tele-neuropsychology. Um, however, for me, the guidance that was most relevant to this assessment was the guidance from the BPS, Division of Neuropsychology. So this covers a, a lot of really important considerations when conducting remote neuropsychological assessments. So things like the use of technology, um, service user and clinician considerations, uh, and how to set up and administer different assessments. One of the, the things that they really noted as being um, important, as, as you would expect, is that technological factors are, are important. However, um, they noted that they're unlikely to be a major influence on validity, so long as the system itself works and the broadband is resilient to enable appropriate visual, visual and audio sharing. Um, and I made use of the, these guidelines to develop and to plan the process for this remote neuropsychological assessment. So the service user originally was referred to another discipline within the community neuro and stroke service. Um, following the conclusion of um, the initial piece of work, the individual was referred to the psychology team for a neuropsychological assessment. Um, the service user was functioning well in their day-to-day -day life, and whilst they experienced some motor and mobility difficulties, um, there was nothing that would impair their engagement in a remote assessment. So the service users stated that their goal was to further their education. Um, and this was through accessing further studies at a university. Um, the service user had a diagnosis of a neurodegenerative condition and really wanted to know whether the condition had impacted on their cognitive abilities with the hope that this assessment would be able to guide their pathway going forwards, informing their decision whether they would proceed to access further education or whether they would then choose to channel their energies into a different pursuit. So should they then choose to engage in further education, the assessment would also be able to tell them about areas of strength as well as inform the university of areas where support or adaptations may be needed. Based on the diagnosis and the concerns that the service user reported, uh, the following battery was selected. Um, these tests covered mood, executive functioning, attention, memory, fluency, task switching and more. As you can see, it was quite a large battery to complete with the service user. Um, even, even if this was to be done face to face. Um, the service user had raised concerns regarding memory. So I made sure that there were quite a few memory related tasks within this battery. So reliability and validity of assessment is important and it's never evolving area, particularly within the current climate where there's been a significant increase in research in this area, as you'd probably expect. Um, at the start of uh, planning this assessment, um, a range of assessments have been validated for telehealth, 
Um, for example, the R bands, the digit span forwards and backwards, and some oral fluency tasks. Um, and some had also been assessed in terms of their feasibility and validity for teleconference administration. There's also evidence of some assessments being used which hadn't been formally validated, but were still used generally in telehealth settings, um, such as the ACE3, the TOP, the WAITS, and other assessments. Um, again, research is ongoing in this area, and there are papers out there which suggest comparability of administration methods, so telehealth versus face-to-face, -face, in a range of tests. So the testing for, for this neuropsychological assessment was conducted using AccuRx, um, which for those of you who don't use it, is an online video call system used within the service. Um, so this system enables video call, screen sharing, and the use of multiple cameras as needed through sharing the links with another device. So on discussion with the service user, the decision was made that the assessment would take place over three sessions, each between an hour and an hour and a half long. The aim of this was to avoid tiredness, both physically and in terms of eye strain from potential overscreen usage. Um, as some of the assessments, such as the ACE3 and the R bands, um, required drawing to take place, it was requested that the service user had access to pen and paper. Um, the service user opted not to have support from anyone else during the assessment, um, with their partner being absent during the appointments. But this is something that for, for other service users, it might be possible to integrate. So different options were needed for different parts of the assessment in line with copyright. So an example of this would be, while screen sharing was possible for some assessments, for others, a separate camera was needed that was focused on physical assessment booklets. Um, meetings with the service user had taken place using the video conferencing software prior to the start of this assessment. And this allowed for us both to get familiar with the software and get used to working together. Um, we made sure that we planned it thoroughly and we discussed all of the different options for, for what would be happening and to make sure that the service users had everything that they needed, um, both in terms of physical materials and in terms of what, what they felt they needed to know. Um, my familiarity with the equipment was also really vital so trying to make sure that the administration of these assessments was in line as much as possible with standard procedure. So making sure that the materials were appropriately displayed. So we also talked about potential problems before the start of the assessment. Um, and we put a bit of a plan into place to make sure that if these things did happen, we felt able to raise it with each other um, and had a bit of an idea of what we would try and do to, to sort that out. So it was things like thinking about um, the charge on the laptop and do we know where the cable is so that that can be plugged in and um, what to say to each other on either end if the image isn't clear or if it seems like the, the signal is poor. And we also developed a specific consent form for um, this teleneuropsychological assessment um, to, to aid with the discussions and to aid both of our understanding. Um, so what do I mean by two cameras? One camera was needed to, to show my face really and to keep that human element of the assessment so that the service user wasn't just staring at the screen. Um, and this camera would also be the camera that was used for screen sharing functions. Um, so it was, it was the camera from the laptop, basically. And um, the other camera was then um, rigged so that it would show the test materials and booklets where 
copyright meant these needed to be physical copies rather than digitized. And um, there are special cameras out there for this specific function. Um, however, these weren't available. Um, so it was necessary to improvise. Um, as hopefully you can see from this diagram here, um, we've got this table where the test materials were placed um, with a booklet. Um, I fortunately had an adjustable lamp um, which, could, which could hang over the table um, from which I suspended a clear, a clear sheet of plastic um, and then placed, placed a phone on top of the plastic, um, which could then have a link sent to it to connect it as the second camera. Um, so this, this did allow for a clear view of the test materials, but it did take a little bit of practice to make sure that everything was positioned appropriately and didn't cast unnecessary shadows on, on the test booklets. Um, so there are a range of alternative options that you could try, like um, finding a way to, to clamp a selfie stick in place or um, developing alternative hanging camera options like this one. Um, and it is definitely possible to, to uh, try things out and find something that, that will work for you from what materials we have at home, particularly during circumstances where, where we may not be able to collect materials from the office or where the, the cameras aren't available. Um, and a bit, bit of information here about the consent form. So there was a range of guidance out there about what should be in the consent form, but there was no, no formal template that we could find um, that that was available when this assessment was being planned and when consent was being gained. So we developed our own um, and had input from our trust information governance in the development of this. So this consent form, I'm not sure if it's big enough for you to see it, but hopefully it is. Um, it covers a series of points in addition to standard consent forms. So it includes things like agreeing that your face is going to be on the screen, um, agreement to inform the assessor if other people are present in the room that we can't see, um, acknowledgement of um, the potential for technical issues taking place, and that there may not be um, documented reliability or validity for the test being used remotely. Um, as well as acknowledging copyright considerations. So what went well? From my perspective, I felt that the preparation and the planning that went into this assessment was so helpful. Um, it felt like the service user was familiar with the technology and that from my perspective, at least, we were able to complete the assessment with relatively few issues. Um, I found that splitting the assessment into chunks was really helpful for managing fatigue during the assessment, um, which hopefully prevented any effects of fatigue um, affecting the results of the assessment. Um, and as well as for the service user, I found it for myself as well, because juggling all the different aspects did get quite tiring and making sure I knew which bit I needed to screen share, which bit I needed to move the test booklet into place was something that, that got, got quite tiring quite quickly. Um, interestingly, um, the findings from this assessment were consistent with the common patterns and cognitive functioning for the neurodegenerative condition that the service user was experiencing. Um, and also just to highlight service user involvement. So I really believe that involving service users in service development is so important. And um, this service user involves themselves in the development of service user materials for future assessments, as well as providing feedback on this assessment battery, which hopefully will guide the service moving forward to help optimise the assessment process. So um, truly, truly invaluable. 
what could be improved. So whilst the information we have on reliability and validity is increasing, it is important to acknowledge that this is a big area of improvement. Um, however, in order to ensure that the service user had a comprehensive assessment without having to reassess or assess different components at a later date and delay them from, from meeting their goal, um, it was necessary for us to rely on some assessments that hadn't been validated for remote assessment. Um, this and the implications of this were discussed with the service user when planning the assessment um, and they gave consent with this in mind. Prior to the assessment, there was a query as to anticipated lag time during normal functioning of the video call software. Um, two of my colleagues investigated this and during their testing found that the lag time was around half a second. Um, this meant that I was able to factor this in during scoring, for example, thinking about whether I took half a second away from the time, would that make a difference to the score as an additional consideration for, for um, thinking about what, what the results meant, particularly within the context of remote assessment. Um, another factor is that as a member of staff who isn't yet qualified, it wasn't possible for me to make use of some of the more streamlined services that are available. So for example, um, some remote administration software is out there for different companies um, which have digitized versions of a range of their assessments. Um, and this would have made the assessment less cumbersome to administer. However, without that membership um, and access to that system, it was um, unfortunately not possible to use digitised resources without, without breaching that copyright. Um, so following the assessment and the distribution of the report, feedback was was involved um, and they provided these quotes regarding the assessment. So they found that it was an interesting experience, especially when they didn't really have much of an idea of what was involved in a cognitive assessment. And um, they, were, they were completely new to this sort of circumstance. They noted that they felt the format worked well um, particularly having it broken down into smaller chunks over, over three days. Um, they did raise that they found it difficult to be certain that they had heard the um, question or the instruction clearly and correctly, which added a little bit more uncertainty to an already uncertain series of circumstances. Um, and they raised that actually, if they had a choice, and if we weren't in a situation where it was necessary to have an online assessment, they probably wouldn't choose to have an online format. So learning points. Um, I would say that completing the assessment with this service user certainly made it clear to me that it is possible to complete a comprehensive assessment battery using video call technology. Um, and based on my experience and the feedback from the service user, I feel that there are some things that I'll certainly take forward, um, particularly around preparation. Um, the assessment definitely wouldn't have gone quite as smoothly without the, the opportunity for the service user to experience the software and for myself to have plenty of practice before the assessment day. Um, in terms of the challenge of the service user, uh, finding it hard to be completely certain whether they'd, they'd heard what was said um, is also, of course, really important. Um, in terms of practicalities, I'm aware that the service user didn't have headphones or a headset on during the assessment. Um, and actually, had they had this, this may have helped with some of that uncertainty. Um, however, I'm also aware that just by the fact that it's it's something quite new, having these video calls, having these assessments, um, that it's it's really difficult to combat all of the uncertainty 
particularly when we don't know the, the quality of the sound that's coming out of their laptop. Um, especially if there are any fluctuations within the signal um, from, from the broadband that's being used. Um, potentially a way of combating that might be to make additional allowances around the instructions that are given. So um, making it much more clear, asking if they would like it to be repeated or clarified beyond what's necessarily permitted within, within the standard operating procedures. Um, just to just to try and work around that. So thank you very much for attending this presentation. Um, and are there any questions? Thank you very much, Daisy. Um, that was a really interesting talk. Um, it sounds like preparation or shared preparation with the service user is definitely key to um, a successful assessment. There are a few questions. So I'll start with the first one that came through from Christine. And she asks, does the second camera need to have a separate login to the meeting? OK, um, so the way AccuRx works is um, there's an option in there where you can copy a link um, to, to the session. So um, what, what it's possible to do is to email that link to yourself um, and then log in from um, another of your own devices. Um, it keeps it keeps it secure because only the people you're emailing that link to is able to access it. Um, so it did make that process a lot smoother and a lot safer. Um, so you don't don't need a separate login. You can you can just be you version two. Thanks, Daisy. I think Helen on the chat has also suggested another idea. Um, about how to use the camera app on your phone, which everyone else can see. Um, another question from Emma Humby. Um, were the copyright issues regarding screen sharing only, or was it with regard to the use of assessment via telehealth in general? Um, so, in terms of um, the copyright factor, a lot of it was in terms of the digitization of resources. Um, so the way, the way I interpret it and certainly my supervisor interpreted it was that the resources could not be digitized, um, some of them anyway, um, but they could be shared over, over the internet um, as long as the sharing process was not being recorded. Um, so this meant that um, in line with the consent form, which asked um, the service users to confirm that they weren't recording, would not try and record um, and wouldn't try and take any images, that we were still able to use the materials without breaching that. Um, hopefully that answers that question. Thanks, Daisy. Another suggestion, which I think was probably related to um, the hearing difficulties, was about whether there's an annotation function on AccuRx. Um, I'm not sure myself. I'm not sure either, but it's it's a really good idea to investigate it. I would hope they'd have something. Um, and if not, it might be a suggestion that could be made. Yeah, it's certainly something to look into. Mm. Um, and another question, did any of the service users have difficulties understanding or expressing themselves? Um, so uh, this, this assessment battery was conducted with one individual um, who, who fortunately didn't have any difficulties communicating or expressing themselves or in understanding what I was communicating. Um, if working with service users where that is necessary, then I would expect that um, a bit a bit more planning, a bit more thinking around how best to do it. For example, um, it may be that a facilitator would be helpful to use um, in terms of uh, whether it's doing some of the aspects of moving materials around 
or having someone present who can rephrase instructions should they be needed. But again, thinking about meeting the standard operating procedures for that assessment and whether actually it might need to be conducted um, in, in a face-to-face -face setting or whether you just need to be a bit more innovative than I can think of at the moment. Thank you. Um, just one last question, um, and it's more a comment really. Um, Steve Naylor is wondering if the lag times will vary by call. Um, is there any easy way to measure it? Um, because half a second can be can matter quite a lot in some some of the tests that we do. Um, I don't know whether you found an easy way to measure it at all, Daisy. Or um, generally, the the way we thought within the session that we could test it um, would be the just raising our hands and having a bit of a, a visual idea of actually when when do we see this hand raise um, unfortunately in in a live session without um for example making sure that our clocks are synced or accessing a specific website that we know will show a specific time and testing that um, it would be hard to keep track of that within within an assessment um, so I, I would say it probably is possible, um, but whether whether it's viable to do, um, particularly with, with clients who may struggle a bit more with that understanding and with the communication is, is another thing. Um, so yes, it, it, it can certainly be done, um, but how, how reliable that is, um, is, is another matter, I suppose. Okay. Great. Well, thank, thanks very much, Daisy, for answering all those questions and for a really informative talk. Um, and I will hand you back over to Abby.